indeed great is the faithfulness of our God. At dahil siya ay matapat sa atin, marapat lang nasuklian natin ang katapatan ng kanyang kabutihan. The faithfulness of our Lord requires our faithfulness to Him and to His people. That's why we should be kinder, nicer, gentler to people around us. There are many people, many students who commit suicide because they're being bullied at school. Hindi po kakaunti ang mga kabataan na nagpapakatay dahil inaapi-api, kinakawawa, binabatok-batukan ng mga kaeskwela o mga kababata nila. What is a bully? A bully is a person who is cruel to others, especially those who are weaker or have less power. Kaya makikita natin na kung mas, mas kulado ang isang maton, he can bully a child, young people can bully senior citizens, Powerful people can bully weak ones. A bully is a noisy, threatening, quarrelsome, and oppressive person. Capitalizing on brute strength. To bully is to intimidate someone, to act aggressively towards someone weaker. Dictionary, wiktionary ang ating ginamit. So there are street bullies, school bullies, family and company bullies and in the community of nations there are also international bullies strong nations that bully weaker nations and then there are church bullies hindi lang sa kalye hindi lang sa mga lansangan at mga eskwelahan may mga maton meron din sa church As you entered our doors, when you came in here, you encountered some of those bullies. Sabi niya, ganyan ang suot mo. Kapasok-pasok ka dito. May isang pumasok dyan na kapatid kanina, hindi masyadong Sunday dress ang suot niya. Nakita niya yung drawing. Wala siya, pake pumasok pa rin siya. Mabuhay. Welcome. Church bullies and bullying must be identified. Who are church bullies? A church person who is cruel to others, especially those who are weaker or have less power because they are perceived or judged as sinful or less holy. So yung mga banal, mga naka-closed neck, long sleeves, yung mga mukhang ibuburo ng mga kasuotan, nilalait-lait nila, yung mga sa tingin nila, kulang ang damit mo, magsisimba ka pa naman. Maraming bullies inside even the temple. Luke 18, 11. The Pharisee stood over by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not greedy, dishonest, and faithful in marriage like other people. And I'm really glad that I am not like that tax collector over there. Nasa loob na nga ng church, nasa loob na ng temple, wala pang inisip kundi ipagmalaki ang sarili at maliitin ang kapwa. There are people who need to belittle others in order to feel big. And sadly, that happens also inside the church. A bully in the church is a noisy, insolent, threatening, quarrelsome, and tyrannical, holier-than-others fellow in the fellowship. Kaya sa church, marami ring maton. There are people who make other believers' lives miserable with their heavy religious impositions and expectations. I have reached this level of holiness, so must you. I cannot get down to your agora, you must ascend to my Olympus. Mga requirement ng mga nagjojos-josan sa church. Even when Christianity was young, there were Jewish Christians who were trying to impose their Jewishness on Gentile Christians. And what did a wise man say in Acts 15.10? Now why are you trying to make God angry by placing a heavy burden on those followers? This burden was too heavy for us or our ancestors. 
So, bakit yung pinapahirapan yung mga bagong mana ng palataya? Igigit nyo at ipapataw nyo sa kanila ang mahihirap na mga kaugalian, tradisyon at utos na ni tayo o ang ating mga ninuno ay hindi naman nakasunod. Matthew 23.15 Jesus says, You Pharisees and teachers of the law of Moses are in for trouble. You're nothing but show-offs. You travel over land and sea to one follower, to win one follower, and when you have done so, you make that person twice as fit for hell as you are. Jesus speaking. Sabi, lagot kayo, mga maaarte kayo at mga mapagpangga, mapagkunwari. Sikap kayo ng sikap pagmisyon, tapos pag may na-convert kayo, gagawin nyo lang na anak ng kadiliman, mas doble pa ang sama kaysa sa sama nyo. So, what does it mean to be faithful her for hell when you are converted by such types of religious people? You might be fit for hell as a grand failure in spirituality or as a religious bully, you get and you become fit for hell. Church bullies are critical of others. Noisy, aggressive, sleuths, or bossy because they think of themselves as holy or godly. Malakas ang boses ko. Lagi ako ang galit. Nag-aamu-amuhan ako dahil siyempre, mas banal ako eh. Kasi sa inyo. So, dapat ko kayong pagalitan, sitahin, bantayan, parusahan. And who are the victims of church bullies? Those who are caught in the act of committing sin. Like the woman caught in the act of adultery whom the people wanted to stone to death. Bullies. No. Victims ng mga nabisto na nagko-commit ng sin, do not caught in the act. People na mayroong sinful past. So people who join the church try to hide very much their past because one elder discovers it and it becomes a main item on the bulletin board. Victims ng may trabaho, gawain, or associations or relations deemed sinful or borderline sinful. Aha! Empleyado ka pala sa casino. Aha, tumutugtog ka pala sa bar. Lagot ka pag nakita ka ng mga elders. Victims who are considered abnormal, morally sick, and moral outcasts. Meron ding mga congregational bullies. Huwag kayong gagamit ng Philippine instruments of worship. Don't use gongs and native instruments at worship. That's demonic. That's syncretic. Bullies. They insist that only Western formal music is the music of heaven. That the music of God could only be what comes from the West. Bullying. Religious bullying. These dominant nations want to continue to dominate the people they colonized through religion. Not only through politics and economics, but also through religion. So the missionary brings his culture to his mission field and insists that everybody changes. Culturally, you might say, "Oh yes, we welcome your Christ, but please allow us to wear our own costumes and play our own music and use our own language." Why must the culture of the missionary be the culture of the church? Because it is peddled, it is packaged as the culture of God. Lies. Wala naman culture ang Jose. God is supra culture. God is above culture. And God is better, uh, better explained, better understood in the language, in the culture of the people that, that receive the gospel. Yan ang dapat baguhin. The church should change its ways. The church should go back to God and not only to the culture of the powerful. So pati mga Filipinized worship, minamasama nung iba. Play only the organ because it is the organ that is played by angels in heaven. Lies. Sino pa yung mga church victims, mga pinag-iinitan ng mga banal? Ang japrox, japrox niya. Bakit ka nakahikaw? Bakit ka ganyan ang suot mo? Bakit ka nakikinig sa ganyang tugtog? Evil. Mga binabantayan, mga pinopolis, ng mga elders, ng mga banal. Pinagagalitan, inuusisa, sinusuri, bawat ginagawa. Nire-regulate, kinokontrol. Nililitis, sinuhusgahan, ipinibilad, dinidisiplina. 
Aha, babae, nagkasala ka pala. Tumayo ka rito sa harap at aminin mo sa aming lahat. Nasa bulletin board ka. Alam niyo yung mga dakila at mga holy churches, may bulletin board. Nakalista doon mga makasalanan, mga nanlalamig, mga backsliders. These are the list of names who are sinful, backsliders, etc., etc. So, masyado nilang pinahihirapan ang mga biktima. What is the hold of church bullies on people that submit themselves to their bullying? We are the only church. The only true legitimate church and the leaders of our church are the only true anointed servants of God. Outside of us, there is no salvation. So we abuse you, we bully you, you stay here, you have no choice because we are the only true church. Lies. Pag nga sinabi, we are God's appointed, anointed leaders, kaya magsabit kayo, propaganda lang yun. Yung one true church is propaganda. So people could do what they want to do and people have no choice but to submit like meek lambs. Bullying you self-appointed power. Inappoint nila sa sarili nila, sa congregation nila. Actually, bullies are power trippers. Marami po sa mga nang bubuli ng aapi, siguro may mga personal frustrations lang sa buhay. They bully because of their own frustrations, their personal repression, and they envy those people who are having a great time of their lives. Mga inggit sa masaya, kaya bawal sumaya. Bullying is also to intimidate someone perceived as less holy, as we've already said. To act aggressively towards someone weaker or perceived to be weaker in church morality ranking. Church, listen. Bullies mistake bullying for caring. Akala nila kasi concerned lang sila. Kasi mahal ka nila. Bullies blur the line between bullying and caring. Bullies misunderstand, misuse, and abuse verses, especially Proverbs 27.5. One of the most abused verses on earth. Proverbs 27.5-6 Better is open rebuke than hidden love. Well meant are the words of a friend, are the wounds a friend inflicts, but profuse are the kisses of an enemy. So ito ang ginagamit na lisensya para maingay, Nahiyain, bungangaan, pagalitan, i-embaras, i-demolish. Ang akala nila ay nagkakasala. No? So, akala nila, open rebuke is better than secret love. And they think that open rebuke means public. No. So therefore, in front of everybody, in front of the board, in front of the church, I will rebuke you. That's what is meant by open rebuke? No. They think that open rebuke means noisy, confrontational, insensitive. That open rebuke can be rude and unkind and cruel. No. Open rebuke only means not a false approval. That really, it is a rebuke. You don't hide your rebuke. You sincerely express your rebuke. But you don't have to be rude and public about what it open means. An open rebuke that this is not a fake agreement. That I rebuke you openly, meaning I register my protest, my disagreement, but the word open doesn't mean it is to be scandalous, noisy, and public. Open rebuke simply means that it is not a judasic kiss. Kunwari lang approval. Ibig sabihin lang ng open rebuke, clear that you are being rebuked. Don't mistake it for approval, don't mistake it for anything else. It is a rebuke, it's clear. Kaya sabi ng contemporary English version, Proverbs 27, 5-6, the same verses, A truly good friend will openly correct you. You can trust a friend who corrects you, but kisses from an enemy are nothing but lies. Said another way, the Proverbs are just telling us, you know, it's better to be corrected clearly, honestly, directly corrected by a friend rather than be praised by an enemy. 
or be approved of by somebody who pretends to approve of you but actually does not. So open yung rebuke. So an open rebuke is truthful but friendly, decent, kind correction. Stop misusing the verse. It becomes a license of many people to hurt others and to assuage their guilt for inflicting pain because they think they are serving God's interests. We should be caring instead of bullying people that we consider to be less than ideal. Caring for God's people is mandated, even expected, by God. Ezekiel 3, 1-4, the Lord said, Ezekiel, Israel's leaders are like shepherds taking care of my sheep, the people of Israel. But I want you to condemn these leaders and tell them, I, the Lord God, say you shepherds of Israel are doomed. You take care of yourselves while ignoring my sheep. You drink their milk and use their wool to make your clothes. Then you butcher the best ones for food. But you don't take care of the flock. You have never protected the weak ones or healed the sick ones or bandaged those that get hurt. You let them wander off and never look for those that get lost. So hinahanap yung mga naliligaw, hindi yung naglalayas. Yung naglalayas po sa'yo nawawala, hindi kailangan hanapin. Yung naliligaw, hinahanap yon. So ang sinasabi ni Lord, you are cruel and mean to my sheep. And you pretend like you are caring, solicitous shepherds. Caring instead of bullying should be gentle and light. Never rude. Love is never rude. Love is never rude or boastful. It is not arrogant. Matthew 11, 28-30, Jesus says, If you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I'll give you rest. That's what the church promises. Rest. Take the yoke I give you. Put it on your shoulders and learn from me. Not from bullies. Learn from me. I am gentle and humble and you will find rest. This yoke is easy to bear and this burden is light. Tell me, if church leaders behave like policemen, like the Secret Service or FBI, will there be peace in the church? If everybody's spying on everybody, telling on everyone, will there be peace? No. That's why telling on everyone is part of bullying. People are forced to hide the real wounds. People are forced to go underground with the real troubles. That's why you find lots of hypocrites in the church. Because they are forced by the system to hide who they really are and what's really happening in their lives. Because they are punished for honesty. In the church, there should be many masks at the door that when you enter, you get your mask and wear it. But no, Jesus says, come to me if you're tired. I'll give you rest. You can trust me. I'm gentle. I'll take care of you. Jesus was no bully. Bullying is never a Christian virtue, even if you pepper it with verses. So Jesus' caring is restful for the patient, and also for the caregiver. Nakakapagod din naman magbantay ng kapwa, ha? Nakakapagod magpulis. So, mapapahinga ka rin kung gagamitin mo lang yung Jesus style. Jesus caring is instructive by personal example. It is gentle, humble, easy to bear, and light. There is tenderness instead of violence. You treat people like patients are treated in a hospital. What do people get from being a church member if open rebuke means bullying? What's the point? You'll never get peace. You'll get talked about. You'll get judged. And you probably might be expelled. So I get in in the first place. Hebrews 4.15 
Jesus understands every weakness of ours because He was tempted in every way that we are, but He did not sin. So Jesus does not encourage or promote sinful living. Jesus just understands. There's a thin line between understanding and promoting. There's a thin line between caring and bullying. We have to draw the lines. Galatians 6.1 my friends, you are spiritual. So if someone is trapped in sin, you should gently lead the person back to the right path. But watch out and don't be tempted yourself. So open rebuke means gentle. Not harsh. Not rash. Not insensitive. Not abrasive. Jesus' caring brings restoration instead of demolition. Most church disciplinary actions lead to demolition. The person subjected to public attention never ever recovers, hardly. They will stay for two more or three more weeks. Then they will leave your church and transfer elsewhere where they can find refuge. Because there is another misused verse in the church that is tell it to the church. When you find somebody in sin, tell it to the church. But what did the church mean in the original context when the verses were written? It was a house church, a home church, where everybody is a relative, everybody is a close friend. So that when you tell it to the church, actually it means tell it to the family. And the family will not gossip about you will not backstab you because this is family. This is a closely neat social unit. But now when you have 300, 500, 1,000, 7,000 members and you tell it to the church, it will become gossip fair. Because not everybody seated there cares about you. So it's important to define what the church means. The church in that sense meant a group of maybe 10, 12, at most 20 people who are closely related to each other. That's why I say, that's why the verse says, well, if the person doesn't listen to the church, treat him as an outsider. That is to force the discipline upon the person because this group is also supposed to have the same livelihood. Maybe they are farming, maybe they have a trade. So if somebody is kicked out of that circle, he will not survive. Therefore, he will be forced to be disciplined. But now do it in one church. The only thing that the person does is move to another church. And if that person is gifted with music or singing or whatever, he'll be very welcome. So it doesn't work. Times have changed. While we are anchored on the unchanging truths of Jesus' love, we must be geared to the times. The church must change, must reform again, must go back to Jesus and to the spirit of Jesus again. So yung tell it to the church, anong equivalent yan ngayon? Parang isumbong mo kay Tulfo. I-broadcast mo. Ipahiya mo. Nakikita nyo ba sa TV kung minsan yung mga investigative reporting daw? Magdadala ng mga hidden camera sa mga massage parlor, sa mga nightclub, sa mga ganito mga lugar. Tapos, kukunan nila yung mga nagtatrabaho doon. And these women, women who are already victims of unjust society becomes victimized again because it is told to the nation. They are treated like rats. So, tinatakpan nila ng mahahaba nilang buhok yung mga mukha nila, yumuyuko sila, nilalait, kawawa, biktima na nga. Hypocrisy. James 5.16 If you have sinned, you should tell each other what you have done. So, you tell the others what you have done, not the others talking about you. You have no right to talk about somebody else's sin. You only tell your own sin to somebody who will pray for you. And it's voluntary. It's not forced upon you. And then you can pray for one another and be healed. The prayer of an innocent person is powerful. Not the prayer of a gossiper. Not the prayer of a malicious chismosa. The prayer of an innocent person is powerful and it can help a lot. That's why the prayer meeting attendees must be very careful 
Because gossip can pass around like a prayer request. Let us pray for this sister because she has a problem. Everybody says, what's her problem? Then it becomes the story of the prayer meeting. Tomorrow, it's on TV. And ngayon, with the social media, text, internet, ang dali-daling kumalat. So the offender is the one that tells, not people. So Jesus caring is about acceptance instead of rejection. You accept people as is where it is. Then love the person, minister to the person, and let the spirit and the person work together for positive changes. It is not for you to force changes upon people. John 6.37, Everything and everyone that the Father has given me will come to me and I won't turn any of them away. So what should we have? We should have self-judgment instead of judgmentalism. Galatians 6.1, But watch out and don't be tempted yourself. So we should watch. We might be tempted to judge people. We might be tempted to do exactly what we condemn. 2 Corinthians 5.10 After all, Christ, not people, will judge each of us for the good or the bad that we do while in these bodies. So if ever any one of us is guilty, stop bullying fellow believers. Remember, don't forget, we are all just forgiven sinners. Nobody is better than anyone else. And if you think you are better now, watch it. You might fall tomorrow. Di mo alam. Romans 3, 10 to 12. The scriptures tell us no one is acceptable to God. Not one of them understands or even searches for God. They have all turned away and are worthless. There isn't one person who does right. Kasali tayo doon. Wala dapat mayabang. Wala nagmamalaki. Okay, banal ka. Di magpakabanal ka. Pero huwag mong sakalin yung kapwa mo para sundin ka. Hayaan mo siya. Pare-pareho lang kayo nakikinig ng mga sermon, nagbabasa ng Bible, naaawitan, na ipapanalangin. Let people process their personal journey to God, into holiness. It's not for you to police or to enforce doctrine. People will face God alone and God will judge each person alone. We must be wary of our own sinfulness, not of other people's. 1 John 1.8 If we say that we have not sinned, we are fooling ourselves and the truth isn't in our hearts. So alagaan mong sarili mo, bantayan mong sarili mo, higpitan mong sarili mo, hindi ang iyong kapwa. Matthew 7, 1 to 5. Don't condemn others. And God won't condemn you. God will be as hard on you as you are on others. He will treat you exactly as you treat them. Ang linaw naman eh. Huwag mong huhusgahan ang kapwa mo para hindi ka husgahan ng Diyos. Kasi kung gaano ka kahigpit sa kapwa mo, ganun magiging kahigpit sa iyo ang Diyos. Tatratuhin ka niya kung paano mo tinatrato ang iyong kapwa. Verse 3, You can see the speck in your friend's eye, but you don't notice the log in your own eye. How can you say, My friend, Log in your own eye. I will, uh, you know, I will take the log in your own eye. You're nothing but show-offs. First, take the log out of your own eye. Then you can see how to take the speck in your friend's eye. Paulit-ulit naman itong verses na ito. Hindi na ito bago, di ba? Biang atupagin mo yung sarili mong puwing. Huwag yung puwing ng iba. Meanwhile, Romans 8.1 tells us a very interesting verse. If you belong to Christ, you won't be punished. Of course, there are allusions to eternal punishment. But why not apply it also this side of eternity? Don't let only fellow believers and fellow forgiven sinners punish and bully you. Don't take it. May sumulat po sa akin sa Facebook. Somebody wrote me at Facebook. Sabi niya, let me read it to you. Inis na inis po ako sa mga self-righteous people sa church namin. Laging may pinta sa iba. Nakikialam, nangihimasok sa buhay ng may buhay. 
pati suot ko, kilos ko, kung sino ang kasama ko. Pinag-uusapan. At pinagagalitan ako lagi kahit di ko hinihingi ang opinion nila. Ano ba ang pwede kong gawin dahil kumukulo ang dugo ko at galit na galit na talaga ako? Sagot ng butihing pastor, Panlisikin mo ang mata mo? Huminga ka ng ubod lalim para umalo ng dibdib mo? Sigawan mo ng todong, mind your own business, scratch your own galis. Huwag kang tatalikod, ilapit mo ang nagangalit mong mukha sa kanya. Siguradong siya ang aatras. At di kanya guguluhin hanggang siya ay mag to die is gain. Ipavideo mo sa isang friendly soul ang eksena at ipalabas nyo sa susunod na church anniversary para kapulutan ng aral. Tapos sabihin mo, Joke. Bakit ba pinapayagang magbosing-bosing ang mga church bullies? Tell me. Pag may nangbubuli sa inyo, ba't nyo pinapayagan? Pag may manang nagsabi, ba't ganyan suot mo? Mga, eh, ito pa gusto kong isuot eh. Gusto yung hiramen? Titigil na yon. Pero pag nag-behave-behave ka na para kang bulating na tapak-tapakan, tatapakan ka ulit. Recipient din lang naman sila ng God's grace. Pare-pareho lang tayo. Galatians 5.1 Joke yun ha. Baka naman gawin nyo talaga. Tapos pagalitan nyo yung mga manang-manang. Igalang nyo dahil may edad na. Di ba? Igalang natin dahil baka nga talagang concern. Pero ganun din yung idea. Don't take it. You can say politely, Thank you for your concern, but I will dress the way I want. Thank you for your reminder. Let me process it. But it's not for you to dictate how I will live. We are just fellow forgiven sinners. Galatians 5.1 Christ is set at free. It, this means we are really free. Now hold on to your freedom and don't ever become slaves of the law again. Now freedom doesn't mean license to commit any mistake or to disrespect the public. Of course, when you attend public events, you must respect how the public feels about how you should dress. When you attend to your private events, do as you please. But when you attend church events, be more respectful of other people's feelings and values. Be more sensitive also. Don't use freedom to trample upon other people's good sense. We should be sensitive to each other. That's why every social event, every public event is a contract. It's a give and take contract because they're an accepted norm. And you do what you can to behave within that norm so you don't needlessly unruffle feathers. So you don't needlessly disturb people or disturb the peace. But indeed, there is a line that should be drawn between this and your private life. And don't allow people to run your life for you, even if they were concerned. Be polite. Accept the correction if you need it to be corrected. But don't be somebody's slave. Don't be a slave of fellow believers. Do not accept church bullying, even if it comes from the board. Individuals must be respected. If a congregation bullies you, layasan nyo. Sabay kanta ng Leron, Leron, Sinta. Kapos kapalaran, lakasan nyo. Tama. Humanap ng iba. Ba't ka magtsatsaka sa church? Sabi nung bully ka. 2 Corinthians 11, 20-22, Paul says, In fact, you let people make slaves of you and cheat you and steal from you. Why you even let them strut around and slap you in the face? I am ashamed to say that we are too weak to behave in such a way. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Jews? So am I. Are they from the family of Abraham? Well, so am I. So sabi niyo mga kapatid, Christian ba sila? Ako rin. Anak ba sila ng Diyos? Ako rin. Huwag magpabuli. Let us examine ourselves if we are guilty of bullying others. I like to emphasize that we should defer to public mores, to decent taste, especially in public events. But nobody should bully anybody else. And you should not take it. Dear Lord, we ask you to examine our hearts. See if there's any bullying tendency in us. See if we force our interpretation of the faith on other people. See if we are oppressive, uncaring, abrasive in your name. 
Father, correct us. Turuan niyo po kami maging katulad ng iyong anak na si Jesus. Jesus taught us to be gentle and humble and kind and loving. Teach us to operationalize this as Jesus, your Son, is our model, He is our Savior, and He is the perfect one. If we are always being bullied or asked, teach us also to examine ourselves if we are needlessly disturbing the public peace. Ipakita niyo rin sa amin, Panginoon, na kailangan din naman kami makibagay, makiayon para huwag makagulo. At yung mga borderline tastes and activities namin, gawin na lang namin sa aming private lives. At huwag nang guluhin pa, mga kapatid. Teach us to be considerate to one another. Teach us to treat other people as better than we are. Teach us to be kind. Pagbulay-bulayan natin, mga kapatid, ang ating pinagsalusaluhan at nawa makalaya tayo sa ganitong negative spirit. Palayain din natin ang ating kapwa and may we all find peace, love, consideration in the fellowship. Father, as we remain still before you for a moment, give us personal applications of this important ideas that we should internalize. Let's be alone with the Lord for a moment and hear the voice of the Spirit.